Mustafa from Ahmedabad, along with my colleague, Dr. Ajit Kumar from Bangalore, both of us will be hosting today's session. The first of all, we should like to appreciate your interest in the soft skill development. And particularly, we all are very keen for the surgical skill development, but it's our precedent, this year's precedent theme that we should also focus on soft skill development. And that is why we are doing these series of webinars. The another important question, why this topic or what is work-life balance? And for that, I would like to give you one analogy, which is very important for us. And we all orthopedic surgeon know compartment syndrome and how serious the compartment syndrome is. And what is the analogy? Like compartment syndrome takes place because there is a rigid compartment, a diff fascia, and the muscles inside that compartment, they cannot expand. When there is a swelling, they cannot expand. And because of that, there is a compromise on the blood supply and it causes pressure on the blood vessels and the nerves. The same thing happens in our life also. The 24 hours in a day is fixed. We cannot expand the day. And in that, when particularly the professional life expand, we spend eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours for our profession. The other compartment that is social life, the family life or the personal life that is compressed and that causes the problem. And that is what the work-life balance. Now, about our faculty, we have five experts on the subject. We have Dr. Siva Sankar, the past president of Indian Orthopedic Association. We have Dr. Atul Srivastav, president elect of our association. And then we have Dr. Ram Chadda from Mumbai. He is also uh, the vice president of our association. Then we have Dr. Rajiv Raman from Kolkata. He is a practicing consultant surgeon in Kolkata and uh, honorary secretary of West Bengal Orthopedic Association. We have Dr. Taral Nagda. He will be joining us soon. He is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon from Mumbai and a very innovative, very creative person. And he has a lot of ideas which are like ideas outside the box. Dr. Ajit Kumar is going to uh, be a facilitator with me and he is from Bangalore, a very famous trauma surgeon. Something about the workshop or, or this webinar, this is not going to be a didactic lectures. We are going to have interactions and by the interactions, we are going to bring some important points. And I also suggest you that if you have any question, please participate by asking the questions. You can ask your questions on WhatsApp. Uh, the number for the asking question is WhatsApp number 97129-25600. Before we go for the interaction, we will have a short assessment whether your life is affected by this situation or not. So I will have uh, eight questions. I'm starting that presentation. Yes, so uh, before we go for the assessment, if you have any question, please WhatsApp your question to 97129-25600. So let's come to the assessment. There are eight questions and this assessment is from the book, Balance Your Life and Work. There are eight questions. Each question has three options. So please write down your answer, either A, B or C and how to evaluate it, how to mark it that I will show you after the eight questions are over. So let's go for the first question. How much of your time does work take up? We have three options. A, I let work take up as little time as possible. B, a fair amount. And C, work seems to dominate my life. So just write down your answer, A, B, or C. The second question, what position does work hold in your personal life? The first A is once I am out of work, I forget about my work. 
B, I do spend some time thinking about work when I am at home. Option C, I think about it constantly, whether I am at home, whether I am at work. The third question is, how often do you find yourself getting swamped or overwhelmed by the task? A, never, B, occasionally, and C, quite often. The question four, how often do you find yourself getting stressed at work? Option A, almost never, B, occasionally, and C, all the time. Question five, which of the following best describe you at work? Very relaxed person, option B, a balance, and C, work all it. The question six, do you feel you have enough time for yourself outside work? A, yes, B, most of the time, and C, no time for yourself outside work. Question seven, do you feel you are in control of your life? Option A, yes, B, just about, and C, no, I am being swept along by work. The last question, are you happy with where you see yourself in three years? Option A, no, I would like to have more, I, I would like to have accomplished more at work. B, yes, I am happy. And C, no, I would like to have more of life outside work. So these are the eight questions. Okay, now we move further and we try to see the result. The scoring system is for A, we give one mark, for B, we give two mark, and for C, we give three marks. So this is how we carry out the total score. I'm giving you one example. Suppose of the eight, there are four answers A, three answers B, and one is C. Then it comes to four multiplied by two, three multiplied by two, that is six, and three multiplied by one is three. And the total is 13. So before I give you what is the importance of this scoring or what do we understand by this scoring, I would like to ask our experts, what is their score? So I start with uh, Dr. Siva Shankar. What is your score, sir? Uh, I had solved it earlier. It was 13, but it has come 12 now. When you are asking the question, it has come to 12. Well, okay. Um, Dr. Atul Srivastava, what, uh, what is your score? Yes, sir, you are mute. We can't hear you. Sorry, 15. 15. Okay. Dr. Ram. I don't, have, I don't have a score as yet. Give me some time. Okay. Fine. Uh, then uh, we have Dr. Rajiv. 14. 14. And Taral. Uh, <laughs> I'm confused. I, I am not beyond the passing line. No, but uh, do you know what is a passing line? <laughs> <laughs> so it must be around 9.5. 9.5. 5. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Let's uh, see the result. The score, how we understand the score. If your score is between 8 to 14, then that means that you have a plenty of time for yourself. Particularly if you are on a lower side, say like eight, nine, then you need to ask a question to yourself that are you doing justice to your profession? 
means are you giving sufficient time for your work if it's 15 to 19 then it's considered as a healthy balance and if it is more than 20 and up to 24 then probably your life is in an imbalance and probably you are going to learn a lot from this webinar so with that i stop sharing the presentation over here and then we come to the uh, discussion and i am sure that uh, this discussion is going to bring out some important points so i should like to uh, ask dr uh, shiva shankar that we have heard this terminology work life imbalance a lot what actually we understand by that terminology i think it's a very personal thing for different people what is work life balance but grossly speaking one can say it's a it's equilibrium state where one effectively balances the work or career demands and those of their personal and family life and social life work life balance defines how well a person prioritizes personal and career demands and it is best to create a schedule that creates a balance between the work and the personal life so work life balance is not a timetable or kind of endeavor that i can chart out and give it to everybody that this is the way you cook your work life balance no it what works for you today may not work for you tomorrow what works for you may not work for somebody else so it all depends on what stage of your life you are whether you are beginning in your practice, whether you have your own practice or you are working for somebody, you are working in a corporate hospital or you are working for multiple hospitals. So many things depend on how active your social life, whether you are a member of few social organizations like Rotary, Lion or something else, or you are a member of so many social some banks, so many things, it depends upon that. So it's a uh, people have their unique work-life balance routines. Things that work for someone cannot or may not uh, and always work for somebody else. So to know what is your need, what is your professional goals, what is your family need, what is your social needs, what is your personal needs, and all these things are very, very important to chart out your own way of life. And that will make the stress less for you and and also, one of the webinars you had conducted, Dr. Diren, which talked about the burnout issues. So the burning out issues will be also less if your stress is less. This is what I understand by work-life balance. Yes, so you highlighted uh, two important points that it's an individual thing. Like it differs from person A to person B. So what is a balanced life for me may not be the balanced life for someone else. That is the first thing. And the second point which you brought out that one of the effect of work-life uh, life imbalance is in the long run, it leads to burnout. We have with us uh, our president with us, uh, Dr. Professor Ramesh Sen. Sir, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, I will be asking the same question to Dr. Atul also, that if we divide our life into four areas, the first is professional life. The second is a personal life. First is professional, second is personal. The third is family life, the time which you spend with your dear and near one. And the fourth component or the domain is social life. IOA activity, I put it in that fourth domain, the social life. So, can you tell us about how many hours, roughly, roughly, it, it will be different from weekdays to weekends, how many hours you spend in each domain? Yes. As for my professional life is concerned, I spend about six hours. That's all. As for personal life is concerned, I spend about four to five hours. As for IU activities are concerned, we spend about three hours. And that is the way we actually almost all the days practically. But because the weekend this year, it's a traveling time much. So whether you ascribe, because I love traveling around. So that comes to me as a kind of a layer time also. Traveling, going, meeting. So that time doesn't give me stress. I enjoy going around. So that is a player time for me. 
Okay, but uh, you said that your personal component is uh, uh, three to four hours. Yes. But then what about the sleep? If we consider the sleep as a co personal component, then how much is your personal component? How big is your personal component? In hostel, I take my commitment to my family, my personal friends around. So that I spend about four to five years. Right. And what about the sleep? Sleep is five to six hours. Five to six hours. Okay. Um, Dr. Atul, what is your uh, like division of your 24 hours? Sirenbe, first of all, um, I must say ki I, one of my hobbies is sleeping. <laughs> so I spend around eight to 10 hours in sleeping. Okay, good. That's the nice uh, way to keep your that, brain that young. That is the time I'm only with myself and my dreams and I'm comfortable. Now, as far as you asked about the time allotment to various domains like profession, personal, friends, society, I would say, I mean, to have an, uh, a perfect work-life balance is ideal, but uh, it's not always real, I would say. And as Shivasa said, uh, your balance between your work and life changes with the stage and age you are in life. For example, in your formative years, you are slogging hard to establish yourself. That is 20 to 40 years of age. You're slogging it out to establish yourself. 40 to 60, you're kind of relatively matured, kind of relatively established. So you balance it. You try to balance it 50-50%. So the balance from here shifts here. And post 60, again, you tend to withdraw a bit from your work, you tend to relax. So the balance shifts the other way and you spend more time on yourself and your family, on the society. This is my take on that. Okay, thank you. So again, you emphasize a very important point that uh, how we look at the life, it depends on the stage and age of the life. That's very important. And you gave a very good overview that when you are younger, your life is different. And when you are near 60s, your perspective towards the life is different. Your expectations, your demand from the life, they are different. So now I would like to ask Taral. Taral, what do you understand by the work-life imbalance? And do you accept this compartment Theory. So, you know, the, the problem is we feel that work and life is different. It's never different. If you take example of our conferences, so there are lectures, but then there is music and dance also. And though the, you know, in a conference when the lectures end, the entertainment begins. It's never that when work ends, the life begins. Or once the life ends, the work begins. It's never so. For me, you know, what I feel that it's a flux state. You know, work-life balance is not a final destination. It's a journey. It's going to change person to person. And for the same person at different stages in life, it's going to change completely. I'll give you an example. You know, there was a question which you asked there that do you take work home? Of course, yes. You can see Ram and me, we are still sitting in scrubs here attending this webinar. So if I'm at home or I'm in a movie, but if I get a call from the hospital that the child has supracondylar fracture, I'm not going to say that, no, I'm at movie and I will not answer this call. I'm not taking responsibility for the child. We always do that. And that doesn't make us imbalanced. Similarly, if I'm in busy with a surgery and if I get a phone call from my wife, I'm not going to say I'm in a surgery. Then by all of everybody smiling and I will not take phone call from my wife. It doesn't happen. I think it's it's a flux situation and more you, you know, mix around and, uh, you know, rather than having, uh, you know, a fixed menu, if you make it a la carte approach, it works better. I'll give you a few examples. For example, uh, if I'm at work, but on a Thursday for lunch, you know, if me and my wife meet together, you know, at my workplace, it's fun. A uh, lot of our conferences, our families join us. So though it's work, but there is also life in it. And when there is no differentiation, I feel, between work and life, when there is life at work and when you're living, you're working, doing it with passion, then the balance gets achieved automatically. 
I, I hope I have answered okay. that question. Yes, I I uh, understand and like uh, you have explained it well. And I have seen Punita accompanying you at uh, various or many conferences. So that is what you said. What you teach, you also practice. Or what you preach, you also and, practice. That and Diren, really that is not right. just to collect the shopping bags at the stalls. <laughs> <laughs> or going for the shopping. That's the reason. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, now yeah. I'll the... just just uh, interrupt here. If you see the word workshop, it is a combination of working and shopping. So that is what <laughs> <Okay>. our our <laughs> conference. Yeah. Okay, right, good. So uh, now the next question, which is uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Ram. This work-life imbalance, how common it is? Do you really see this in your friends, in your colleagues, because you travel extensively? across India, outside India, and do you see your friends, your colleagues suffering from this issue, or this is just a hypothetical problem? Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> Before I answer your question, I would like to say that a very important point has been brought out by Taral, that work-life balance for an orthopedic surgeon in most instances is also work-wife balance. And how much ever you may look at it in a lighter vein, it is important. And it is something which has kept many of us going and is very, very critical. That's the first part. Now coming to the second part, which is your question. Have I seen this imbalance? Yes, sir. We have seen this imbalance. I see it on a fairly regular basis and we have seen it through our own careers. If you look at those three compartments that Atul Bhai spoke about, it's a very, very truthful three compartments in life, sir. And like the first compartment where you do all the hard work, but you don't gain much because all the hard work that you did, somebody else benefited. There's a second stage where you work hard and you get what you deserve. And then you come to that third stage in life where somebody else is doing the hard work, hoping that they will get that you know, cherry at the top of the ice cream. But then unfortunately or fortunately, without doing much work, you get that cherry. So realistically, that's what gives you the time to have that leisure at that stage. But I have a slightly different take on it, which I want you guys to hear. So today we have three formats of playing cricket. We have test match, we have one day and we have T20. Very few players are able to execute their excellence in all three formats. I'm using this because this is something that is very uh, well accepted and understood because all of us look at films and cricket as two important passions for Indians. So it is something which we need to understand very, very clearly that just like an ideal cricketer would be able to play all these three formats. Similarly, an ideal orthopedic surgeon should be able to do his work, excel at his work, give adequate time to his family and friends. And yes, contribute to society as a purpose, as a passion, and do something good, make a dent in the society and do something which he would be remembered for, not just as a eulogy, but as something that he has contributed and gone. So this is how I look at it. And I see the imbalances there. It's growing even more. But if we sit back and think, there is a way out. Okay, good. Really nice explanation. Uh, like last uh, webinar, you again explained the three phases of practice. Here you explained the three phases of life. So I, I really appreciate uh, the idea. Now I should like to ask Rajiv uh, that Dr. Ram said that uh, he sees this very commonly. Uh, but my understanding is that this is not a new thing. Before 20 years also, before 30 years also, uh, we have seen people working very hard. We have seen doctors working very hard. I know a few seniors who used to work till 1 a.m. in the morning. So uh, do you think that it is something new which has happened in the current era, which is 
responsible for this or it's the old thing very good question uh, dhiran sir actually if you see this term work life balance came into existence in 70s when people started more of, uh, of getting this stress work related stress and uh, all those things but if you see it has been there since ages because of the human being not only the doctor desire to succeed professionally and push to set aside on well being and that was the main issue if you go in our ancient era also normally it was like divided the work uh, uh, the working part of our life were divided in three phases it was the sadhana the dharma and karma but in 19th and 20th century the karma came first the people started more working on the karma and that was the reason this disbalance has occurred and if you see about the uh, vedic science also i am talking about the ancient vedic science also so all mind and matters are interconnected at deeper level and so that they started doing that you should go for the meditation or yoga or sadhana so these things has been since ages and i think with new professional i think uh, in a surgical line or sometime in our professional life it has increased in last two or three decades because of three or four things which is important first thing is that everyone is trying to succeed another one i think this is this has been the part of the professional life so you see someone you make him that yes i want to be like him and that is one part of the uh, professional commitment you make that is, i want to become that thing and for that you imbalance your work life uh, work and life so all these things are very important and if you say me it's not since 20 years 30 years or 40 years it's since ages the only thing like previously they used to use different terminology and now we are like giving or like using a different yes, terminology yes. otherwise like the concept was uh, or is age old yes okay good so now uh, we ask a very important question because all of us when we say like we want to diagnose chicken pox or we want to diagnose monkey pox we ask a uh, one simple question what are the symptoms of this condition so i would like to ask uh, dr siva what are actually the symptoms of this condition let's forget about the definition uh, is it new or old but if i want to identify this condition uh, in my in in myself or in my family member or in my friends what are the symptoms which gives me a suspicious that yes this is probably a work life imbalance Yes, sir. you should give that eight question eight to everybody and ask them to write if their points more than eighty. <laughs> that <laughs> you can diagnose very easily. Okay. Jokes uh, apart. Unfortunately, yeah. like uh, none of our expert had a score more than that. So. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Uh, it's very difficult to say that, that uh, I can diagnose because everybody has his own way of doing the life. Because uh, uh, if you ask me. i travel almost every weekend going to some part of the india to give lectures and coming back so i really traveling itself is stressed out so everybody is stressed out somewhere or the other but uh, if you ask how to diagnose somebody who is a regular professional person then yes who is available all the time to the patient he is available in the hospital round the clock and his mobile is freely distributed to everybody whenever he is in the conference his mobile is always ringing those are the people i feel that they are stressed out on the work because they don't know how to delegate the work how to keep their mobile switched off or not to give their direct number because i know taral gives the contact number of his assistant taral is not directly uh, uh, disturbed the patient will call the sir taral's assistant and if it is real emergency that will be redirected to him so all this filtering mechanism happens elsewhere then you will not be stressed out if you are the person who is receiving the call everybody's call then yes definitely you will be stressed out this is one of the way i look at it but uh, the there are other things also like if you ask somebody to come for a movie yes he says that no he is too busy or if he doesn't attend a party regularly or even if you are get together in the party one who comes very late 
these are some of the things because he's overworked at the uh, profession. So it's unable to give time for the commitment for social and personal life. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for giving a broad overview of like what are the symptoms of uh, work-life balance. Right? Uh, yeah, Tarun, uh, please. To, you know, WHO has, an, has a definition for this, of a physician burnout. Actually, there is a definition. And there are three sort of uh, essential, uh, you know, which you have to fulfill before you say that there is a work-life imbalance or a physician burnout. So first is emotional exhaustion. You know, people say, Ki, Aaj mein thak gaya, you know, bore ho gaya, you know, kanta la gaya. You know, the, these are the words when people use it's emotional exhaustion. The second is depersonalization. depersonalization. So you don't feel connected to your patients, you don't emote to your co-workers, your colleagues. So that is emotional depersonalization. You know, whatever happens to pa patients, complications happen, and you're not affected. And the third part is uh, low sense of professional effectiveness. You know, people feel that I am doing so much, but I am not achieving anything. The lack of self-esteem. So these three things constitute physician burnout. So that's a official, you know, definition by WH. That's all I wanted to add. I think whatever Shiva said, it includes these three things. But uh, this is how it is in literature. Yeah, yes. that's correct. And what you mean? should be happy yeah. do, doing whatever the work you are doing. You should be happy. It you should not yeah. be unhappy. Means uh, that is another way of looking at this. Yes. Okay. So, Tarun, what you said is absolutely right. Like these are the symptoms of burnout, but uh, burnout is a late outcome of uh, work-life imbalance. So, it is something yes. like the compartment syndrome is the current condition, and ischemic contracture is the outcome. So, burnout is something like ischemic contracture, which you see over a period of time. Before we move on to the next part about the etiology, I would like to ask Dr. Uh, Ramesh Sen, what do you think about the symptoms of burnout? I put the same thing with Dr. Shiva said in the end of his right now statement, that what are you doing? Are you happy doing it or not? If you're happy doing it, you're comfortable. If there is a stress in doing what you are doing, obviously it is a burnout. So for me, enjoying my surgery, feeling a kick out of completing the procedure, enjoying my interaction with my patients, really happy to see hello to every first patient till the last patient. And then in the evening, when you go to sleep, within 10 minutes, if you're getting a sleep, you're a comfortable person. If there is anything wrong in that, either in your surgery, if you're stressed out, in your patient examination, you start, start getting bored up, or you start really looking, sending the patient as faster that you can, the patient doesn't feel satisfied. Or when you start getting up in the sleep also, when you are not comfortable with that also, I, I think these are the things which make that you are not right at the spot on the imbalance or balance. Okay, Ram, I would like to ask you about, like you said, the work-wife imbalance. So what are the symptoms? You said it's not work-life imbalance, it's work-wife imbalance. Sir, I said that an integral part of work-life balance is work-wife balance. Right, in, yeah. In the sense that most of us uh, are so deeply entrenched in our work that the multifaceted human being within an orthopedic surgeon unfortunately cannot live up to all the other roles that he has to live up to. Please understand. Uh, any successful orthopedic surgeon, and I see eight of them on the screen right now, they have compromised to some extent in being good fathers, in being good sons, in being good partners. And when I say that, I don't just mean work wife, but it means there has to be somebody who's going to actually take care of that aspect of them. And, and I've noticed it that a lot of people who are very <coughs> complete uh, have a partner who fills in those defects, if I may use the word, in their ability. Not because they didn't want to do it, but because they could not do it. So that's where I'm coming from. So we have to have that excellent camaraderie with a partner. Your wife has to be a friend. And that's very, very important. 
that's where I was trying to say. Like I've known Punita and Taral probably as long as you have. And, and I know the two of them are the best of friends. And I know that. So that's the way it ought to be. Good. So we have understood about the symptomatology, the overview of this condition. Now we go on to the next important phase, that's etiology, or what actually caused this problem. And I request uh, my good friend Ajit about uh, to ask you questions to our expert on that point. Over to you, Ajit. You're muted, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I think uh, in all the discussions that we have had, we have alluded uh, directly or indirectly to some of the causes, but uh, specifically what could be the causes that lead to work-life imbalance. So I'll start off with Dr. Atul. In your opinion, what do you think are the possible causes that uh, leads to imbalance in one's life? Jindai, personally, I feel that the you yourself are the most important cause of imbalance in your life. It is up to you to create that balance or imbalance. I believe, very strongly believe that each and every individual, every, every human being is born an individual with individual capabilities and abilities. So you should always, and of course, some imperfections too. You should try to realize that and always try to be the you you are rather than emulating and being the he, he is. The moment you stop being the you, you are, and try being the he, he is, you are inviting imbalance in your life. That is my simple take on Okay, that's putting it very succinctly. Uh, the same question to Dr. Ram. More elaboration on the possible causes for work-life imbalance. Sir, I, I, I loved Atul Bhai's answer and I'm now getting um, sort of um, intrigued and I'm going to give you an answer which I had not planned. So I'm coming up with it. Sir, I feel that the imbalance begins very rightly within us and within those three things that I allude to all the time. Your head, your hand and your heart. Now, for me, a person who is perfectly balanced in life is at a stage where he has a URL. A URL, as I know from these uh, computer geeks, is a very interesting word. It says uniform resource locator. Am I correct, sir? Dr. Dhiranj Gandhiwala and Taral, you are smart, brilliant guys. But for me, URL means unplugging your head, you relaxing your hands, H and L, listening to your heart. Anybody who does anything contrary, which means he doesn't unplug his head, doesn't relax his hands and doesn't listen to his heart will have work-life imbalance. <laughs> this is my in-short answer and I play with the head, the hand and the heart all the time. So enjoy yourself. That's where I am. I think that's a fantastic answer. I think it uh, sort of uh, also gives us a, a check uh, Self-check uh, those uh, three words that you have said. Um, now, coming to uh, Dr. Rajiv Raman, you know, what uh, Dr. Uh, Dheeran Bhai had in mind was, you know, a lot of these, uh, at least the juniors that who work with us or work under us or uh, we see around or even in our own homes, um, they work different hours, different shifts, and that sort of thing. So is, is that likely to uh, cause burnouts or uh, uh, dissatisfaction or uh, some sort of imbalance in his uh, outlook or in his career? 
I think this is very good question. And uh, Ajit sir, usually what happens, the sitting of the duty, it has been there in emergencies. And in orthopedic practice, normally we have to deal with emergency. But in our Indian scenario, or I can say you Asian scenario, we don't have any distributed duty hours. Now in Western uh, countries, you can see even in, if you go for a NHS job, now they are distributed uh, uh, hours that you should work and you should have a work for the night duty or you should have uh, this work duty in three shifts or four shifts. Normally what happens when a resident join, a junior fellow join, it's that it's like that they don't have any restricted of working hours. It's like two or three on call in a night, three or four, uh, uh, two or three night duties in a week. That definitely decreases your surgical accuracy also and decision making also. And this has been proven well in uh, uh, one of the study in NHS. So if you work, if you go for more than three night duties, you're in the morning hour, you will have your surgical acumen and surgical decision, decision making will be affected. So I think the shifting of duty is important and limitation of this duty hour is very important and that guideline should come and sometime it will come, I think. And this is very important to have a, a perfect work-life balance in residents and fellows also. So is that uh, going further in that uh, duty hours, is that something a new concept or because if you listen to our seniors, they say we worked three nights at a stretch, yes. you know, um, we did, you know, uh, all through the night we were operating. These are the stories that you hear from our uh, seniors. So is that generation a different uh, uh, attitude to the current generation or is it something with the modern life that one has to look after one's health that's more important? Dr. Rajiv? Yeah, so if you see, the, to cope up with the stress, I think, yes, the, uh, previously, there were no uh, definition of working hours. It was like, if you have joined a residency, it's, it's like you are seven days, you have to work. That was the main Also, people don't have any particular working hour or uh, something like that 15, 20, 30 years back. The last 10 years, all of, if you see in US or UK, they have made guidelines say, yes, this should be your working hour so that you should have a good professional and uh, surgical acumen when you are working in emergency duties. And that is very important when you are dealing with emergency cases. I think in Time will come when we will have to change our concept and usually with time, usually we changes our uh, training program also and think, I think in due course of time it will come. The work-life balance will come in some, uh, I think something, some type of thing will come in the NMCI also or NMC also. So that people will, and I think there should be, I think IU has taken a very good task to have a webinar on work-life balance. I think it should be with the National Medical Council Commission also. We should have this for all professionals, not, on, not only for orthopedic surgeons, for all professionals. So how do you should go for this work-life balance? Okay, thank you. Now, Dr. Shiva. Yes. What about uh, striking a, how difficult is it to strike a balance when both the husband and the wife are professionals? We see on the IT <coughs> side, lot of issues happening there. Is there a similar sort of uh, experience that you have noticed or seen amongst the medical fraternity? Uh, I think uh, there are varieties of uh, professions the spouse can be involved. She can be from the same profession, same specialty, or just a medical doctor with some other specialty, or a paramedical, uh, uh, like my wife, who is a microbiologist. So, it makes a lot of uh, differences and also sometimes if the wife is working with a government institution or some other uh, body where she is on a transferable job, etc., 
the problems are entirely different so you cannot put all of all these uh, different types of fruits in one basket so there are definitely advantages of both the couple working and there are equal number of disadvantages also like uh, if both of them are working they can understand the demand of each other it's uh, financially very sound because it's double engine there is uh, both of uh, spouses are working and earning money and management of the house also becomes to some extent uh, good because uh, both the spouse think that it's their job and it's not only the job of the wife and sometimes we think that uh, the children will have a negative aspect with both the spouses working or the parents working but there is a positive thing here also because slowly children learn to be less dependent on their parents and tend to find their solution for their problem on their own and they become self sufficient and self reliant uh, quite early and it also depends on the whether you have a uh, you are uh, the ch children have their grandparents or somebody in the house to look after in the absence of their parents all those things makes the uh, the equations different for different working class people because some of the hospital where i visited both the spouses are working but the hospital staff members also live in the house they look after both the house as well as the hospital so there may not be that imbalance to a great extent because of the help they receive from their own hospital staff so this is about the positive aspect of the uh, 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 both the spouses working but the negative aspects like disadvantages are there is a increase set of challenges because both of them are working the stress is increased because uh, both the spouses want to achieve something in their life which uh, they will be bogged down because of the family life or personal life then uh, it might be difficult for the lady to manage the family as well as the professional life and they sometimes they might have to sacrifice so these are some of the uh, problem and especially if the spouse is at a different place due to transfer or something then proximity to, to the uh, uh, partner is also less so the domestic affairs and other problems creep in so this is how i look at uh, the way it can affect the life so there is both pros and con uh, cons for this uh, both the spouses working while you are there can i ask a personal question yes you are a person who is running away every weekend and both of you are professional so how do you make up for that for, with your spouse okay i'll make it a point clear that though my wife is a microbiologist but she has been home maker for in the initial 20 years now she is a school teacher so what she like loves to do she is now doing so when the ch my children were young when they needed one of us definitely she has sacrificed her profession and to be with the family and i as dr ramesh sen sir said i do enjoy going out to places and it's not the stress interacting with people like you all people and sharing my own knowledge i do enjoy so no no my question so my, was no, no, my spouse understands that i love doing that so that is the reason why she has given me a free hand she has never uh, said or anything ag uh, about my going out week after week for so many conferences no no we want to learn from you how to pay back that freedom that you have <laughs> uh, it's very difficult because it's the understanding <laughs> wife is the one so you have to okay. ask her only <laughs> yes All right okay sorry about that going beyond my brief i think no no that's fine anyway. perfect so now dr ramchanda talked about work wife imbalance <laughs> dr tarul how do you address this work wife and wifi imbalance that is the role of social media in our working life ajit uh, and diren bhai if there was no social media no zoom no wifi this this program itself would not be possible to be telecast 
And you know what's a wonderful thing? People are watching this in their drawing room with their family, with wives you know, across India and maybe so on, so many other parts of the world. And this has been possible because of social media. See, a lot of people feel that social media should be called anti-social media, and anti-social because you know it does damage to one's own life, to health, to the family life, to the work. I, I feel. In my case, actually, social media has helped me to organize my life. And when you organize your life, there is balance. Achieving balance is about organization. I'll give you a few examples. Now, because we have social media and WhatsApp groups, you know, it is possible. I'm sitting here. I have a supracondylar fracture coming at SLC Children's Hospital. My resident can send me a photograph and I can say, give this child a slab. And I don't have to go and see that patient in middle of night or in middle of this webinar. So, you know, that is how they help us. You know, there are many things how social media will help and all of us you must, must be using it. Now, latest what we have been using is WhatsApp boards. Now, WhatsApp boards is a technology where a WhatsApp number answers for you without your presence. So, if I if you know, send a question to Ram Chadda and if there is a patient who needs his appointment for a spine consultation, the bot will ask, you know, do you need an appointment or it's an emergency? Is it a routine or it's an emergency procedure? And what will give the appointment? So you don't need a secretary. You don't need to answer these things yourself. And that will save your time. And, and the time which you save in non-productive work is the time which is utilized on, pers on personal health on personal uh, growth and for your families. So social media is there to help. Social media also help in your, helps in your life. I think it's because of social media I've been, you know, been very close to my kids now who are not staying in India right now. You know, without the Zoom calls and WhatsApp groups, Ram, how would we keep in touch with our family and friends who are from across the nation? We have a KM group, Ram, you have a Cyan group. And it's fun to be with that. That's our life. And without social media, it wouldn't be possible. Without Facebook, we would not know that Sandeep Patwardhan is at Greece and enjoying with his wife. So these are all part of, you know, living life. And I think without social media today, there is no balance. Any person who says that uh, I don't have WhatsApp, I don't carry a smartphone. There are a few of them. We know them who don't have a smartphone. I think their life is not balanced. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can that be overdone? Can the social media part of it, can it take over the life of a practitioner? So what people do is, you know, in their family time, in their personal time, they give a large percentage of time to social media and what's, you know, to television and, and, and uh, Netflix and, and all non-productive items. And, and that's lack of priority and that's lack of focus. You know, so that is that is something which is strictly no no. Coming to Dr. Atul on the same or similar theme, Dr. Taral briefly mentioned about uh, TV and Netflix. So these sort of uh, entertainment channels um, are they do they play a major role in uh, the work life imbalance that you notice in your juniors or uh, friends or Acquaintances? Yeah, surely and hugely. Ajit Bhai, I would say I, I agree with what Taral said largely. Uh, all of us as children have written an essay on science, a boon or bane. Vigyan, Vardhan, Ya Visha. All of us have written. So to have a modality is good. Now, whether you use it, misuse it, or abuse it, it is up to you. What Taral Bhai mentioned is absolutely fine. Life has become so easy now uh, uh, because of these uh, modalities. But at the same time, once you are at the airport, just observe the people. 99.9%, .9 including yourself, will be hooked and logged in into your mobile. Now, what they are watching, I'm sure they're not watching a supracondylar fracture there. <laughs> so... I mean, to misuse and abuse a particular modality is also not good, which is today very, very prevalent. It, it, it completely isolates you from the rest of the world. You are in your own world watching whatever you wish to watch. 
and killing time, wasting your time. So there are both ways to look at it. Of course, it's a fantastic modernity, but provided used judiciously. So spending time with family, with Netflix is a good thing? Balance uh, in that? Yeah, sir. In the COVID times, it was a very good thing because we had nothing else to do. But then people got addicted to it. And as a consequence, you see the effect of OTT that our Bollywood is in doldrums. So yes. everything has its fayda and nuksans. And uh, the balance is that fayda or nuksan be balanced right the better that. Okay, thank you. Ajit, uh, I just want to interrupt here for a second yes. and want to give a tip. There is a facility on Netflix where different family members or friends mm -hmm. in different countries yeah. can watch a movie together and discuss. So then it okay. becomes balance. If your you know, right. uh, uh, parents are in one room, your children have come and still you're not paying attention to them and what, watching a Netflix serial, then that is important. Thank you. So on the same note, Dr. Ram, how do you manage your uh, WhatsApp, email, and being now the uh, election officer, your responsibilities are so huge. So how do you strike a balance between all these uh, um, social or uh, social media activities, let me say, and uh, at the same time having a balanced life? Sir, I have a very simple take on this, sir. Whether it's email, whether it's WhatsApp, whether the email and WhatsApp is serving you or you are a servant to WhatsApp and email is very, very critical. So email, WhatsApp is totally under your control. There are people who I know who are dear friends of mine who feel very unhappy because those two double lines never became blue. I am one of those guys who the day he got to know that there is an option of never making those double lines blue and the only negative to it was you would not know if your message has been read by somebody else. So yeah, I've opted in for that. And I think that to be happy and be complete, that's the best way out. Sir, at the end of the day, it's only transmitting your thought or your message said so the world has not come to becoming instant gratification Amazon Prime. Each one of us has to understand that very clearly, sir. That we cannot be dependent on email, WhatsApp, and it should not be an integral part of us where that technology is overpowering our lives. No, sir. So, yes, be happy, use it sparingly, use it for leisure or pleasure, as mentioned by uh, Taral, uh, as a group, perfect. Use it for transmitting medical records and discussing cases in groups, fantastic, big asset, big boon. But if you are looking at it as a form of communication, sir, I still believe in picking up the phone and talking. And for me, a hug, a deep, meaningful relationship, it's far, far superior than watching a movie on the screen at the same time in four different parts of the world. So for me, I believe in deep, meaningful relationships, which have to be physical as well. I'm still a very social animal. And the other modalities, whether it is email or WhatsApp, is only a modus of communication. So I am very clear that they have to be your servants and you cannot be their servants. I'm very clear about it. Thank you, sir. With that, further, uh, Dr. Diren Bai will take over. No, no, Ra Ram, Rajiv wanted to add something. Yeah, I think this is very important, uh, what Ram sir told. So don't get addicted in opening your WhatsApp and email every half an hour or one hour. One hour. Make it a time. In the morning, just see for half an hour, afternoon, either during lunch time or in between OT and evening. And this, I think three times in a day is good enough. For male, I think once time, one time in a day is good enough. Because now, 
if you see in uh, psychiatrist also the people the children young guys are coming with the addiction of whatsapp and email even in the midnight they are opening the whatsapp to see and the midnight they are opening the facebook to see the likes addiction of social media i think one should uh, not get addicted to the social media Okay. Uh, thank you. I can add. Uh, yeah, other please. Thing I can yeah. add is uh, just uh, you keep your all notifications silent. I mean, otherwise, uh, every time tong tong tong, yes. you keep on your night sleep will be disturbed. So keep it in silent mode. Uh, all the the mobile should be in that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Ramesan, what is your understanding of the causes of work life imbalance? Is it the uh, social comparison is responsible or overwork is responsible what is the reason for that i personally think that it is the expectation from yourself or expectations by other to you which you have to comply with they create a kind of a stress on you if you have a ability to control yourself yes this is what i have to do and this is what i enjoy i always take it as a big point whatever work is given to me if i am doing it with that enjoyment i am always happy but if i have to do it something where i am not interested i have to force to do it i don't enjoy it then it becomes a burden to me so looking at when i remember when i was a resident and again talking about for 6 months i was the only resident in the department but then it was a kick yes i know i am the only one so the way you take it because every night i was on duty every day time i was on duty for 6 months i did it but it was a challenge it cannot be forever i know let's now there's a privilege i take it like that so i enjoyed it and that is what i'm saying that was the maximum stress on me at that stage so called but because you enjoyed doing that because i knew that i am the only one who is doing it so it is the way you take that stress on yourself now i have made it out out that i will only work four days a week i won't work next three days i feel very happy because i know i am in control of myself i know that i have to work for six to seven hours only and rest of the time is for me to do whatever i want to do so it is basically the expectations by yourself or by somebody else on yourself which actually makes your mind to be stressed out or not to be stressed out The, the, that is the take which i take the, the thing which you enjoy you are never stressed the thing which does not make you happy which make you under uh, kind of a pressure will definitely be a stress for you yes so what you said is very important like when you are in control of the decisions of the options then probably it's not a problem but if i am not in control let's take an example that i am a junior person the senior person is relaxing at home and the emergency come and i have to go to attend that emergency that's at 12 o'clock in the midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning so that is what actually i am not in control because i am working under someone so that is i think one of the reason because everyone wants every human being wants to be in control and when we are not under control or we are not in control we feel unhappy and that is probably one of the reason of that so that is something like uh, let let me give you an example like my son is working in a it company he wants to go to a doctor at 5 uh, o'clock the doctor has given an appointment at 5 o'clock and if he cannot leave his office at 5 o'clock in the evening then probably over a period of time he will start feeling that uh, because his life is not under control or is controlled by someone else he will start feeling bad about his working hours and that would probably lead in a long run to whatever we call it burnout or unhappiness or whatever like that so in that context i would like to ask rajiv this question that if some junior person comes to you with a similar complaint that uh, my life is not under control because of the reasons which we discussed what will be your suggestions to him now we are moving from cause to like the how to solve this problem yes so let's start with this the junior important aspect right? yeah please yes. 
thank you kiran sir and this is very important aspect i think uh, when you your junior think that his life is being controlled by you i think there is some it's not work life it's something professional uh, imbalance between you and your junior and this thing normally we learns in early part of a professional life what ramesh sensor told so we used to do long hours of uh, duties we we have never complained about that we used to do three or two or three nights also and our senior used to say that, that this is the way you should know how to cope up with those stress this is important and this is the part of your training but now you think if your junior comes to you that, that yes these are the, my issues i think the best thing is that you should have a sitting with him try to counsel him and see whether this is one of these uh, uh, in the first part of the discussion we were discussing this is one of the sign of emotional disturbance also whether he is stressed or not with work life balance so this is very important because if your junior is thinking that you are controlling his duty hours you are controlling his uh, work hours so very important part is that you should sit with them counsel him and try to help him out because it's overall your physical emotional and mental health which is important for you also your junior also and for everyone to work as a uh, in a group in a better way okay good so that's a good tip uh, for the like the junior coming to you for your advice or suggestions this is how you would suggest taral i would like to ask you a one important question that taral are you there or not okay fine so uh, let me ask this question to uh, dr ram uh, dr ram a uh, lot of people i have seen that they work uh, from 7 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the evening they they have the same life from monday to saturday they go uh, to the hospital in the sunday also from uh, 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock and then they say that i will take two weeks vacation with my family so they try to compensate the overwork which they do they neglect their family uh, for 345 days and then they say that uh, the 20 days vacation is sufficient do you agree with that idea or you you disagree with that concept sir i agree with it partially which part do i agree they should take the vacation that's the part that i agree completely now i am bringing you to the part which is independent of the vacation the vacation stands it's an integral part it's an aha moment in their life now let's come to that time when they are they are starting let's say at 7 in the morning and going on to 2 at night sir i'll be very frank with you and i'm sharing this is on a personal note sir sir i used to do opd monday to saturday at one stage during covid times i shut down my opds for a certain period and then resumed work now i have reached a stage where today when we are now looking at almost non covid level of work i am doing clinics only monday wednesday friday i used to run to three hospitals now i do clinic only at one hospital monday wednesday friday and sir i may share this with you that when i was working monday to saturday and working like the guy you spoke about 7 in the morning till whatever it may be i let's assume if i was making 100 rupees and touching 100 lives now when i work monday wednesday friday i make 90 rupees and touch 90 lives and i am getting 3 days so called holidays every alternate day so it is something which if you try it you will realize it sir i mean richard cock had said or spoken about the 80 20 principle the you know the the pareto principle and all those things where they said 80% of your work only gets you 20% of happiness and 20% of your work can get you 80% of your happiness and everything it it really works sir it's even a 90 10 ratio for me so i believe that the the first part is wrong you should not do so much of work you don't need to do it but yes taking those holidays very important sir please take him with every time that you take those holidays those four hormones work the most your endorphin your dopamine your serotonin your oxytocin and those are important integral parts for you to live long so please take those holidays sir okay ma'am there is one interesting comment uh, from one of the viewer and i think that we need to answer the senior people should answer that 
the comment says or the question says that you all are beyond 60 or near 60. You have earned enough. And now you are telling us that you need to cut down your working hours. <laughs> when you were young, you have worked very hard. And now when it's our time to work hard, you are suggesting us that don't work very hard. So how would you answer that question? Uh, Professor Sen, what would you uh, tell to this young person who has asked the question? I have got, because we were also young. We also had the other people telling us what to do. We also had gone to train, same things. We will definitely say, if, if we are looking back at, at that time, the stresses were high because we were listening to somebody else, we were trying to comply. But one thing is very certain. If I am given a job to do something, I know it, I have to do it. And if I have to do it, why not to enjoy it? You can do the same thing with a bad taste. You can do the same thing with a good taste. I know I have to complete it. So I personally feel it. Take everything as a kind of a transit phenomena. We are progressing in the life. There will be a time when you are young, you have to do work. You are able to do work. And there will be time when you will relax back. And when you have to have this kind of a extra freedom with you. So whatever the things come, we have to face it and face it with that positivity. Yes, I am young, I can do it out. Why I should feel tired about it? Why I should be able not be able to do it? So probably take the challenge in the face of it, enjoy doing it, and then go ahead. That, that is what my take is. Okay, uh, thank you. Now let's uh, uh, ask Ram that there is one terminology which has become very popular and in time and again we see it in very uh, newspaper or the magazines, digital detox. <laughs> so what is actually what we understand by digital detox and is there any relation with uh, the issue which we are discussing? Sir, I, I love this question, sir. So digital I detox to me is just like a diction diet. Um, so there are people who uh, don't overeat and don't put on too much of body weight. They will never need dictionary diet. There are people who will splurge, get out of shape, and then they will do everything from intermittent fasting to fasting, no fasting to production to you name it in whatever name, and they will want to come out of it. Digital detox is a very, very fashionable statement, sir. I have some friends who suddenly send a message on the group. Ram and dear friends, we are going off WhatsApp for the next 48 hours. Okay. There are some who even say we are going off WhatsApp for the next 52 weeks. Sir, I have not understood these people, sir. I am very clear, sir. I have a phone. I charge my phone in the room where I'm sitting right now, the drawing room. And I sleep in the next room, which is the bedroom. This phone will be left here for charging the entire night despite whatever the battery manufacturers say. The reason it is kept here is I do not, do not take calls. Sir, I have a valid landline. If anybody needs to reach me as an emergency, which is usually the hospital, they will call me on the landline. So this is my digital, daily digital detox. The other thing that I do, as I said, I don't see those blue lines. Sir, my phone, my biggest problem in life is, sir, if I misplace my phone, I can never find it because I cannot call my own phone. It's unfortunately on silent and all notifications, whether it is for messages, whether it is for SMS or for the phone ring is always shut. So right now also, you will never see a phone of mine ringing during any meeting or anything. It's off. I mean, it's on, it will record the fact that you called me there and back. And as in when I get a chance, I shall revert to you. But otherwise, it's not there. So you do that, you don't need any digital detox, sir. I don't need dictate diet, sir. Okay, good. Don't need intermittent fasting, sir. Good. Uh, now, let's come to uh, Dr. Atul. Next year, you are going to become president of our association and you will be traveling to various conferences. And some young person... Uh, the junior doctor will come to you and ask, uh, sir, can you uh, give me some tips about uh, how to avoid this problem? What will be your suggestion? Or someone, uh, the person who is starting his professional life after passing the MS, 
and he comes to you for your suggestion what will be your uh, guidance to him so first of all what i said i will try to reiterate that that i would like to tell him that you are a born individual and try to be that the second thing is that and in this uh, because this is asked to me in person so this is my view what i would do it may not necessarily be true for everyone else i mean some may as ram bhai says agree to agree and some may agree to disagree the fact is that if given a chance again between the age of 20 and 40 i would work harder between the age of 40 and 60 i would work even harder and around the age of 60 and thereafter i would tend to relax so this this answers the query of our uh, friend who question that at the age of 80 you can very easily tell us to relax but we are not telling you to relax now you have to slog hard to be in a relaxing mood when you are 60 or above and during this course the whole course of time maybe right from your when when you are 5 7 years of age it is very very important personally i feel to prioritize your health we have all seen the example of Dr. mr rakesh junior wala you may achieve whatever you can but let me tell you if health is by your side you have ample time and opportunity to fulfill all your commitments may it be work may it be friends society whatever and the second very important aspect of professionals like us who are under stress sometimes during surgery sometimes post surgery you need to de-stress yourself and to de-stress yourself the best thing is that you need to have some hobby or the other may it be music may it be sports may it be reading writing or watching good things so these are the important aspects i feel of life good uh, then uh, rajiv i would like to ask you uh, another terminology which is become like the digital detox that yoga and meditation has been suggested as a remedy to every problem you talk about a burnout then it says that it works are uh, you say the cognitive decline with time they say that it works so what do you think like uh, yoga or meditation has any role to play in this because when you do yoga and meditation you are probably using your time from the personal domain and is it really going to have more effect on that yes dilan sir if you see uh, there is a term called unplugging yourself from your professional life and yoga and meditation is important part of that so you can unplug yourself it's not only that sometime you can unplug yourself while you are traveling from one hospital to another hospital also and in that term the meditation and yoga works and lots of my friend and senior i have seen they do it while they are traveling also from one part of the city to other part of the city also and in vedic science this has been written that yoga karmasyu kausalam sabata yoga chate that means that he who works with calm and even mind achieves the most this is very important okay good so definitely yoga and meditation has something to uh, have a positive role in this uh, condition good now uh, i will be asking uh, all the presidents of our association that how do you manage to be at the helm of uh, our association and to manage the work life balance so let's start with uh, dr siva how did you manage during your tenureship or before like two or three years because you really have to work hard to become a president of our association thanks for the covid <laughs> i did not have to worry, work too much anyway uh, definitely see uh, you have to go to many places meet people so many things do happen when you are contesting for the election but fortunately for me i have been doing this traveling for more than 20 25 years so right from 1996 i have been traveling almost to 20 30 places every year so i don't think uh, uh, it was too much of a taxing for me and 
probably I will rather say that I was traveling more before the, I decided to contest for the election and I was traveling less during the time of election because few people didn't want to call me also as faculty. That could be also the reason, but whatever it is. But uh, uh, like Ramesh Sen, I do enjoy traveling. I have traveled with uh, Taral. I have traveled with uh, all, all the people here uh, uh, many times. We keep going to places, enjoy the place, and enjoy the whole journey itself. For example, on this Sunday, I was in Bede. But I, Saturday, one of the doctors from Parli Vaidyanath called me, why don't you visit this one of the Jyotirling when you are coming to our district? So though it is uh, about uh, 200 kilometers deviation because I had to go out to Parli, then again go to Bid, again come back to Shulapur. But I said, yes, that's a good idea. And I went there and came back. Similarly, whenever I go to some place, I would rather sleep in the room and waste my time. I attend the whole conference and go to nearby places. Like we went to recently uh, to uh, Agartala, myself and Dr. Ramesh Sen. As soon as we landed from the airport, we directly went to Tripurashwari Mandir Temple, which is about 60 kilometers from Agartala. Then we came back in the evening. So enjoying what you're doing makes your traveling stress-free. I don't say it is totally stress-free because Many a time, the time is not in our hand because sometimes the flight schedule gets delayed or the train gets goes delayed. So many things happen, but enjoy whatever is happening because once it is not in our hand, it's better to enjoy as it is. I think Professor Ramesh Sen also has the same philosophy that enjoy whatever you are doing and enjoy yeah, traveling. Sorry. Incidentally, I have got many few other things also because you know, with the PGI being my lot of time there in PGI, that gives the opportunity to go world over. So I have been able to travel a reasonable amount of, uh, now I can say I would travel to about 75 countries by now, 73 or 4 countries. So you tend to have an excuse to go to that country. And your academics give you that an excuse. And when you said coming to the presidentship, I, yeah, as Dr. Shiva said, we love traveling. So everybody was asking, are you going every week? Yeah, I have to stand for a presidentship. <laughs> I mean, that is such a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Why, why I should not travel? I have to stand for, I have to meet people. I have to get people voting for me also. So, I, so it was such a good excuse. So whosoever was asking, you are going every day. And I am standing for presidentship. And that happened <laughs> subsequently for the voting also. And this year also, I am a president. I have to go, you know. So it is the way you think of it. And frankly, telling you, as you were saying about the time, once you are on the aeroplane, once your things are done, your social media is off, you're, you're off, you're on your own. Whether it is two hours flight, four hours flight, three hours flight, now you're peaceful in mind, you want to do whatever you want to do. You want to read, you want to write, free, because nobody is likely to distribute you for two hours or three hours, except for the coffee, tea, whatever you're taking on the plane. So you do have those moments of yourself with the kick which you get out of traveling. As Dr. Shiva said, yes, right now, last week I was in Mesur. I went to four temples in the evening. I went to six o'clock in the morning to another place to see it out. Whenever there is an opportunity, because, and I remember, wherever there was this thing, you search out what else you can see. So probably this kind of a thing is possible as a president, you have got a very good excuse. Yes, I have to go it out because after all, I'm president. People expect me to be there. Why I should say no? And that is the reason which makes us comfortable, happy, and that travel never looks a stress. It's always a kick. What will be the excuse next year? <laughs> that will be. People will still be inviting, and we are still counting it over. Yes, please invite me if you want to be there because I, <laughs> now I want them to invite me also. <laughs> Uh, invite, I ask, invite, no, no, yeah, invite, I would like to add earlier, yeah, please. because many times we have to give talk also and we have to prepare that earlier I used to take my laptop along with me and while traveling in that flight or traveling in the train I used to do the final preparation even at the venue I used to do the final touch up but in the last three years I don't carry my laptop that has given me a lot of free times whatever the preparation has to be done it has to be done sitting in this room here only and I carry my presentation on the pen drive. So uh, last minute stress out uh, about the presentation will also not happen. Yeah, that is also very important. 
and I agree with that. Now I always carry a small pen drive, whatever is to be done. So that is not a stress. Now. So that that is very important point. Of I life. learned it from Dr. Tanna because I never saw him with a laptop. So I learned it from him. Okay, thank you. So now we are coming to the end. I just would like to ask Taral the last question that uh, you are not the president of Indian Orthopedic Association, but still you travel as much as uh, the presidents of uh, our association. So uh, how do you manage such traveling uh, and try to manage your balance? Dhirinbhai, there are some incidences in life which change your idea about work your idea about life and your idea about balance. I used to travel a lot. You know, it was my passion, but now I've realized that journey within is more important than journey to any place in the world. The balance within is more important than so-called work-life balance. I think these are all superficial terminologies. If you are at balance within yourself, then whether you're working, whether you're with family, whether you're in a flight, whether you're going to a temple, whether you're giving a lecture or listening to a talk or attending an IOA or to be webinar like this, you know, your life will be always in balance. And that is what I've learned in the last two years. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, because now we don't have time, I request uh, Dr. Ajit to give uh, summary and the take home message because we learn, discuss so many things and a simple revision, the quick revision will be of great help. Over to you, Ajit. Okay. Thank you, sir. So we've had a wonderful uh, discussion for an hour and a half now on work-life balance. And I think a lot of facts of life have uh, uh, been uh, elucidated here. It started off with uh, Dr. Diren uh, talking about uh, compartment syndrome and uh, how ultimately it leads to Oakman's ischemia. Uh, if there is no balance in life. Um, Dr. Shiva said, uh, as for the definition of work-life balance, it is a state of equilibrium and it varies with the, a person's uh, stage in life. It also depends on his uh, working pattern, the social networking one has, and it varies at different stages uh, of one's own life. Uh, Dr. Sain said, uh, he devotes about six hours only for his profession, four to six hours for his family. I think just five to six hours for sleep and most of it is on uh, friends and I think his ac um, academics as well as the administrative jobs that he has. And uh, Taral, as for the definition said, it's, a, it's like a flux. There is no clear-cut definition of this work-life balance. It's a, it's a journey. It's a, it's, he said, it's, I think uh, the term that he used is it's like a workshop. So something to that. Yeah, it, I think work-life balance is more like a journey which you undertake with your own uh, family and partner. So uh, coming to the question about what is this imbalance and why it, uh, whether he has seen it around, Dr. Uh, Ramchada says it is quite common. And he has seen it uh, quite often uh, happening to juniors and all that. And he gave the um, comparison to cricket, uh, three uh, modalities of cricket and how uh, one person may not be good at all three modes. And that's why sometimes these sort of issues crop up. And uh, Rajivai, in a very nice way, talked about sadhana, dharma and karma. And uh, he said, probably it is this, uh, in the new age, the rat race, which may be responsible for this imbalance that we have. Looking at the other side of the um, fence may be one of the reasons for this uh, uh, imbalance. As regards the symptoms, Dr. Shiva said, um, probably the best uh, diagnosis would be a person who is all the time work uh, oriented. He is like spending most of his day in the hospital or on the phone and looking forward to calls related to work. So such people display symptoms of uh, definitely will suffer from work-life imbalance. And uh, Taral said, uh, gave the WHO definition for that, the emotional exhaustion, 
depersonalization and a low sense of professional achievement. That's what he said is the uh, WHO definition as regards uh, symptoms. Coming to the causes, um, Dr. Atul said, self, oneself is the main cause for this uh, imbalance. If you are a whole person, you will uh, adapt to all uh, scenarios in life and you should not be having any um, sort of issues. The term that he used is you are you, right? So that's the uh, crux that he talked about. And Dr. Ram Chadha in his own inimical uh, manner, manner said, the head, hand and heart. The URL is unplugging the um, head, relaxing the hand and listening to the heart. I think very uh, catchy words. I think I will uh, keep using that in the future. Coming to the long hours that uh, people do put up or the juniors are meant to put up. Um, Dr. Rajiv mentioned that uh, you know, uh, we need to uh, sort of uh, make sure that there is a, a definite cutoff uh, limit for these working hours, just like it happens in the Western countries. We need to pay attention to our health and our well-being, including sleep and other physical activities that keep us in balance. And uh, as regards um, uh, the spouse, both uh, Dr. Shiva about talking about the working wife, he said it could be work, uh, it could work both advantageously as well as disadvantageously. It all depends on the rapport that you have with one, uh, one another. And uh, of course, again, it's the individual uh, sacrifices that one makes that uh, uh, makes this uh, uh, balancing act all the more uh, uh, important. As regards the role of social media in uh, work-life imbalance, Taral vociferously said, social media is under your control and it is, your, uh, it is to your advantage and it has major, major benefits in the current scenario, particularly uh, you know, in uh, terms of organizing your work pattern and also in uh, conducting meetings such as this. And uh, Dr. Atul said, you have to prioritize your time for the social media. It is under your control. That's what even Dr. Ram said. It's this, uh, whether it is the serve or the server, that's important. Okay. So you are the master. So you need to control the social media. Um, coming to uh, what Dr. Ramesh Sen said, it depends on yourself, how you take up the challenges, how you think, whether it is a, is a stress or whether it is a duty that you need to perform and uh, how you perform. Once you accept the responsibility, you've got to go through with that irrespective of how much time it takes. So you are the master and you, um, you have to fulfill your expectations. Coming to problems the juniors have with work-life imbalance, Dr. Rajiv, uh, gave his advice that we need to sit, we need to have a long chat with them, we need to work out what the problem is and work around that problem. And you give them a patient hearing and uh, probably uh, you give your uh, time to them. That's what is important. And uh, Dr. Ram talked about the 80-20 principle, how to uh, uh, avoid this sort of issues with the uh, youngsters, how to advise the youngsters. As regards digital detoxification, um, it's just a fashionable term, according to Dr. Ramchada. It, it, you need to detoxify every day or you know, on a day-to-day -day basis or even a week-to-week um, -week basis. It's not a year-end thing that you look, look forward to. Um, again, uh, Dr. Atul, about the advice to juniors, he said, work hard when you're young, Slog it out so that at the later age, when you're 60 plus, you can relax and uh, uh, do certain other things that can uh, be your passion, your hobbies and other things. Like most of our here, people here have been or are 
uh, office bearers in the Indian Orthopedic Association. Dr. Rajiv said, yoga and meditation helps you unplug um, with all these uh, stresses of modern living that you have. And the final question about travel and the hectic lifestyle all these office bearers have, uh, everybody seems to be enjoying that. And so it's, it's probably the outlook of one's life, how you take up the challenges and how you uh, adapt to the uh, challenges that you have, both on the family front, on the social front, and on the personal front, how you adapt to the challenges. I think that's what uh, helps you overcome all the problems of work-life imbalance. Thank you. With that, I hand you over to Dr. Dhiren once again. Yeah, thank you, Ajit, for a wonderful summary of the program. And once again, I thank all the experts for joining and sharing their views with us. So with that, we end the session. Once again, sorry, like we overshoot by five minutes, but it was a wonderful session. So we had to continue. Thank you once again, and we will come with another webinar next week. Thank you. Thank you also. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Recording is off. I think Rishi is sleeping. He must be achieving balance with his family. <laughs> Hello. Good night, sir. Hi, Taral. All good? Night. Yeah, good night, all good. Great. See you soon. Okay, bye. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you.